Good morning everybody. Today we're playing Juggernaut. We're going into the mid lane. This was random draft. We're going to do something a little bit different today. I want to talk exclusively about the game. We're going to keep it only about the game today. Just because uh, while I was playing this game, I was doing a similar thing on stream and the stream really liked it. So I thought, hey, let's do it for YouTube as well. I hope you guys enjoy it. Now this is a replay and this is also pretty short. So we'll have to just get straight into it. So I picked Juggernaut. Now, why did I pick Juggernaut, right? That's the first big decision we made in this game. That's because our team needed a few roles filled. First of all, we needed to ha we needed to have a mid laner. Preferably one that can go up against Meepo because, well, they have a Meepo that's going to be going into the mid. Not only did I need a mid laner, but I also needed a front liner that can actually just go and push down towers and be aggressive. Also, I need somebody that doesn't get completely fucked by Nature's Prophet or by any of the other heroes on their team. Most importantly, that Omni Knight. So, who fits? Juggernaut does. Juggernaut fits pretty damn well. Now, Juggernaut fills both the role of the mid laner and the front laner. And actually, let me let me go ahead and take that a step back really quick. I believe in Dota right now in the current meta game, you need to have quite a few roles filled for your team to be good. You need a safe laner. You need a mid laner. You need an off lane. You need a safe lane support. You need a roaming support. You need a front line front laner. You need an initiator. Um, preferably, you want a big team fighter on top of that, and you need a reliable stunner. Now, you may say, you may say, wait, wait, wait a second, Bowman. It's like eight things. I don't that even make sense. Um, that's because Every hero has and should fill multiple roles. Like like every every VR blah, 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 we try that one again. Every hero should and has to fill multiple roles. A hero is not a role. They're two separate things, right? And every hero fills multiple of them. So our juggernaut here fills the role of being the mid laner and the frontliner. Now what is a frontliner? A frontliner is somebody by the way, quick let's take a quick break right there. I saw the Meepo come into lane and I'm like, I can beat him up, so I beat him up. Which is really nice because now I'm like, okay. Um, well, there's a chance I can kill him once I'm level 2. Meepo's faster than Juggernaut by 15 movement speed, which is a lot. Um, so I get my spin, I stick on top of him, I try to predict where he goes, but sadly, he ends up turning around, which was very smart. But then I decide to, okay, you know what? Well, you can stay there if you like. Well, you're gonna have to take the long way around, right? I'm not gonna let you just come into the lane the short way. I decided to sow them out, which is really important there, right? That buys me a lot of time to just safely sit in the lane and farm. Now, Juggernaut is a frontliner. What is a frontliner? A frontliner is somebody you can stick on a tower and say, go ahead, you push, and if they jump you, we are fine. It's really important to have a hero like that in the game. I think the most um, frontline-y frontliner in Dota is Dragon Knight. Dragon Knight just is like... Perfect for that. Because Dragonite, you can stick on a tower, he's tanky as hell and he deals a lot of tower damage. So you have to deal with him, while at the same time it's really difficult to jump him. Juggernaut is similar. Juggernaut can start attacking a tower. If it ever gets dangerous, he just spins and he has the healing ward in the back to just kind of heal him. That is a frontliner. Juggernaut can be that. Our team doesn't have any way to push, right? We have got Disruptor, Undying, a Bloodseeker and Phoenix. How are we going to push with that? Well, we can't. It's just not possible, which is bad. You can't have that. If you can't push, you can't fight, you can't win. It doesn't work. So, Juggernaut fits that role. Now, another thing I needed from my Juggernaut here. I needed my Juggernaut to be able to beat up this Meepo. You see, I went for early boots. Very, very early boots. Why did I get very early boots? Well, I got early boots because if he goes for early boots, I have a problem. Not only that, but if he doesn't go for early boots, I have a huge advantage. This early on, whoever has more movement speed between two melee carries like this, will just be able to overpower the other in both laning and farming potential, rune catching potential, as well as just pure fighting. Since you have the mobility advantage, and mobility is incredibly valuable, why do you think an item like, um, like Blink Dagger is so popular? Because mobility is incredibly, incredibly valuable. Let's go and take another few 500 steps back. I said earlier that Juggernaut is good against Omni Knight. Juggernaut is good against Omni Knight because Juggernaut... Oh, by the way, I find the Meepo here. I try to chase him down. I do get a lot of damage in on him. But as I mentioned earlier, right, the guy just has more movement speed. Right here, I, I, can, I think I can get one more attack in, but it's not a crit. If I had gotten a crit, it was, it was a kill. In fact, even if I had just gotten some higher damage variation on that, that could have been a kill. But sadly... Um, not quite, right? Very, very close call. Uh, I tried to maximize that as much as possible, um, but simply wasn't able to do it. Now, an important thing in this matchup right now, 
they are two meeples, right? One of uh, one of them has Puma's shield, the other doesn't. So one of them is very killable. The other one, still killable, but not as much. So our priority is really to mess up the poor man's, not the, the non poor man's shield meeple, the clone. Clones are easier to kill. So we want to go ahead and go for him at every opportunity, right? I also have a poor man's shield now. I started out with a quelling blade and a stout shield, which honestly I think was a mistake. I should have started out with a poor man's shield. Um, I mostly went for the quelling blade because I know Meepo hardly deals any attack damage and I thought we were just going to spend the early game farming, not so much being super aggressive. But uh, as the opportunity presented itself, I ended up being really aggressive and in that scenario the poor man's shield would have been better. Quelling Blade still works if your finger's just gonna be like a little bit chill because Meepo just doesn't really deal that much damage. You saw even without the Pullman Shield against his Pullman Shield actually ended up winning that fight. I go bottom, pick up that uh, Arcane Rune really quick, which is a nice solid thing to have, right? It's very, very helpful. It was got Pig God around. Now this is kind of difficult because the Disruptor doesn't actually have a great way of jumping him. Um, and also the Meepo's full HP. So what I need to do is I need to get some hits in on him. And so I do that. Now, this is actually pretty nice for me because he thinks I'm just being an idiot. Well, isn't that unfortunate that I'm not just being an idiot? We glimpse him back. We go in and get our Q on him. Lots of damage, but yet again, he's still faster than me. I tried to chase him down, but can't catch up. He has more movement speed. So we push the Q on him. We chase him down anyway. Important thing for me is to stay in AoE off that kill so I get experience and gold. The Disruptor gets that anyway, because he actually is going to get end up getting that kill. I don't. If I leave too early, I don't get anything from that kill. And it's important that I do. So I kept chasing him until he was actually dead. Now, I mentioned uh, this briefly earlier. Against the Meepo, my number one priority is not to make sure I have farm. My number one priority is to shut Meepo down. There are some heroes in Dota where it's not really so much about, you know, what the enemies do. It's more about what does that hero do. And they are incredibly powerful if they ever manage to get ahead. They are also really, really not very powerful at all if they are just even with you, right? And this is a really interesting concept. These heroes need to be ahead of the enemy to be able to compete with the enemy. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the rune is not at the bottom, it's at the top. Um, it doesn't quite show, like, this is one of my least favorite ward placement. That ward right there. Because it looks like it reveals the top rune. But it doesn't. <laughs> and it always trips me out. So I got my face boots now. We saw many times throughout this game how important face boots are. And then there's just like a free nature's profit. And I'm like, free kill? I'll take it. So I go in and jump in on him. Slice and dice him up. He's taking a lot of damage. But just going to be a quick spin. I end up using the spin here just to make sure I don't get any return from anybody. I'm also not worried about it being a nature's profit. Just because I do have a quelling blade. If you use a sprout, I can't just cut out. Easy peasy, right? It's not a problem at all. Yeah, Nature's Prophet goes down. Even have the Arcane Rune ready for that, which means I uh, managed to reduce the cooldown on my ultimate, which is very much handy. And sort of push in the mid continuous. I'm going to go ahead and use my Q to nuke down the Creep Bave. Uh, you really want to do that as Juggernaut. Uh, using the Q to get rid of a Creep Bave is fantastic because it's only 90 mana on a very short cooldown that just completely kills a Creep Bave. Right, it's amazing. It's super good, super good. So I take down the mid tower, make sure to get the last hit, you know. And at this point, I'm considering items. And an item that I uh, was considering at this stage, well, this it really comes down to two possible item builds. One of them is Diffusal Manta, and the other one is um, Battle Fury Diffusal Manta, or Battle Fury Manta Diffusal. Diffusal Manta is part of it no matter what, but it's just a question do we go for the Battle Fury? Why Battle Fury? Battle Fury is nice here because, first of all, Again, my priority is to shut down this Meepo as much as possible. That means I'll be falling behind in farm. If I fall behind in farm, a Battle Fury is a great way of catching up. So, um, you know, that's that's one thing. Second thing, Sprout. I keep the Quelling Blade, I can continue to cut out of the trees, right? I can continue to get out of that, which is good shit, right? We need that. I mean, we have all seen Svens, scrubby, scrubby Svens that don't know how to play Dota. Um, get stuck in sprouts from Nature's Prophet and not have a four staff or quelling blade or anything of the sort, and then they just couldn't fight for the entirety and lost the international. Now, that's something we want to avoid, right? So let's go ahead and think about a Battle Fury again, because Battle Fury lets us keep the quelling passive or active, not passive, active. Um, also, meeples. 
Now, Meepo does really kind of make it difficult for us. Also, this Meepo is just like being really cheeky and then runs in really deep and dies. Right? And this is just like, this is what I mean with shut him down. Um, now you may say, why didn't this Meepo try to escape? Because there was no way he was gonna escape. Actually just standing there and fighting was the right call. Like, that was just the only thing he could do. He could try to kill that guy and then go home somehow, but... It just wasn't gonna happen. If he tries to TP, it disrupts us right there, it cancels it with the glimpse. He wasn't able to escape. At that point, he was dead. And so fighting is actually the right call, as silly as that, so, uh, as that looks. But again, shutting down the Meepo. Now, uh, this right here is a little bit silly. This is me. Um, you'll see in a second, you'll see in a second. I don't want to spoil it. But there's the Meepo again. And again, I'm just like, well, fuck that Meepo. But Disruptor glimpses him, glimpses him back. And now I'm kind of worried about my Disruptor. He's very low. I put out the healing, but then I'm like, oh shit, this tower. And yeah, I end up taking far too much damage from the tower myself. And I drop. So this is me just getting, like, I don't know. There was just a lot happening in that one moment. But the Meepo was there and I wanted to kill him. And then the Disruptor was dropping down and I wanted to help him. And then I didn't have the spin ready because I just used it for a creep wave. And I'm like, ah, oh, no, and they got me. It's unfortunate, but it's like one of those things where it happens and it's alright. It's not really a problem, right? Yeah, it's still a little bit unfortunate. Now, uh, where was I? I was talking about items, right? A uh, Diffuser Blade is a must-have this game because it allows us to purge of the Omni Knight Ultimate, right? Like, uh, that is assuming the game takes long enough for that, right? But yes, uh, Diffuser Blade is absolutely fantastic here. Now, I was talking about Meeple and Omni Slash. So, an interesting thing about the Omni Slash is usually you don't want it to be spread out, right? <laughs> People have this idea that against Meeple you want AoE damage, which is kind of partially true because you can kind of kill like all of the Meeples at once. But ideally against the Meeple, you actually just want a lot of burst, right? Like, Laguna Blade is great against Meepo because it's just like, okay, where's one of them? Let me kill that one. And then all of the other ones die with full HP, so it's not really a big problem, right? But Omni Slash doesn't work that way. The Meepos will be uh, clumped up, and I will... And by the way, this is where I see a low HP Meepo, and I'm like, well, I'll take that. And I know I'm probably going to die for this, but as long as I get the Meepo, I'm happy. I don't get the Meepo right there, but the Disruptor finishes him off anyway, and I'm like... As long as I get the Meepo, my friend, that's all I need. Right? Again, that's my priority. Kill the Meepo. Shut him down. Let's go and take a quick look at the network area, and you can see Meepo is actually below quite a few of our heroes. He's just not able to keep up, and Meepo needs not only to keep up, but he needs to be ahead. If a Meepo isn't ahead, he's just not powerful. Right? He just can't do anything. So my logic is just, you know what, I'll just keep diving the Meepo. If I, if I die for it, that's fine. It's not even a problem. And then at the end of the day, I keep up. He keeps up. We are both at the same amount of money. It means I win. Good. Also, we got a Bloodseeker farming. <laughs> that works for me. I'm happy about that. So, the Battle of Fury kind of works against Meepo because my ultimate is just going to be like spread out amongst each of the individual meeples, right? And they, they're just gonna soak up a lot of the damage and not actually, like, it's not actually gonna kill anything. But with Battle Fury in there as well, now I do cleave damage with it, and I can actually go ahead and do a lot of cleave damage amongst the meeples, vastly increasing my damage output against him. And it's, it's just something that I, you know, I'm not sure if it was entirely the right call, but it's really one of those things where Battle of Fury and Juggernaut isn't that bad anyway. It ends up working out fine. In the meantime, we've got an Ursa and an Omni Knight up here, which is kind of chilling right now. I'm not too worried, and this is where you see me use a, a little trick for the first time. You can see, by the way, let me, let's, go, let's go back really quick. Pay attention to this. I spam click upwards once I cast my ultimate on that Omni Knight. All right, because the Omni Knight is above the Ursa. Why did I do that? So with Juggernaut's ultimate, it's, it's RNG. Right? Like, we all know that. It jumps to random enemies. Okay, that's how Juggernaut Ultimate works. Um, but actually, it isn't 100% random. It is more like 95% random or 90% random. Uh, you can influence it. And by that, I mean you can kind of influence Juggernaut's position during the Omni Slash to increase the likelihood of Juggernaut jump jumping to a certain target again. How do you do that? You spam click, right? You, you just spam click on the ground. Not only 
or, or like you spam click on the ground into the direction you want to go, right? So the Omni Knight was above the Ursa. I wanted to continue jumping on the Omni Knight. So I spam clicked above the Omni Knight so that my Juggernaut is more likely to stay on top of the Omni Knight. If I wanted to go to the Ursa, I would have spam clicked below the Omni Knight into the direction of the Ursa, increases my chances of jumping there. Now, the thing about that, uh, it not only does it make it so that you are more likely to continue into the direction into the direction you're clicking, but it also increases the range on the jump. I'm not joking. That's just, it actually increases the range on the jump. It's really weird. Juggernaut is a weird ass hero. He seems so simple and so straightforward, and he's just like, don't even get me started on the spin. Like the spin is the weirdest ability in the fucking game, right? It's just crazy. Anyway. We have a push ready up at the top, and this is what I mean with Frontliner. You can see that I'm really just like, I'm ready to dive in. Like, I'm happy to run into every fight head first. Um, well, right here, it's a little bit a little bit different because, like, we are not quite sure if we're actually going to go in on this yet. And I've got my Battle Fury incoming, so I'm like, ah, can we wait a little bit? It's just a little, little bit, you know? And uh, then I get my Battle Fury, and at that point, I am um, fine. Meepo ends up dying to the Bloodseeker in the mid lane. Disconnects. At this point, I'm just like, all right, GG, he, he abandoned. Not true. He ends up coming back. Don't worry, he ends up coming back before he resurrects. So it's not even like a difference, really. Then there's the Ursa. He gets glimpsed away. Uh, it's actually really nice that he got glimpsed away, else I would have had to run away. That fight, I lose. Right? Uh, but the thing is, I saw the glimpse, so I'm just like, I'll get one more hit in, whatever. He can't finish me right now. But yeah, I lose that fight once he has his ultimate active and, and those Fury Swipes going. It's just too much damage. It's an Ursa. This is what he does. But yeah. Meepo comes back and so we start pushing this top tower. And again, this is what uh, this is what I mean with Frontliner, right? Like the, the healing and just being able to like walk past this and sit here and not have to worry about anything. Being able to just sit in the face of the enemy. But then we decide, you know what, like this tower, yeah, we, this is gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. It's probably like... Gonna be defended in a second. We don't have the Bloodseeker around. It seems risky. So let's just go ahead and go down here and continue farming. Not working on my Manta style. Well, it's just mostly because I like Manta style, right? Like, you can go for Diffusal first or actually Yasha into Diffusal or any variety of different builds there. They all work, right? They all are absolutely fine. I find some creeps and I go ahead and take those down. At this point, my... Thinking is just like, okay, where's some, where something to do? Right, I have a battle here, which is really awesome for letting me farm on the fly. But now I need to find something to do. Right here, I'll use that trick again, by the way. You see, there's the Enigma. I spam click towards the Enigma. As soon as I see the ultimate jumped to the Ursa, spam click towards the Enigma. Pay attention to it. It's really difficult to see, right? But I use my ultimate right here. It jumps to the Ursa and I spam click to the Enigma and it jumps to the Enigma. Now, does that mean that because of that spam clicking... It jumped to the Enigma? No, that's not what I'm telling you. What I'm telling you is it increased the chance of that happening. And we're always trying to maximize the game, right? Like, we're always trying to increase our chances of winning. So if we can minimize the randomness there, that's a good thing for us. Just letting you know. It's just a little bit of a tip there. Just a little bit of a tip. Uh, you can see this game is already starting to get quite out of hand. I warned you. It's a short one. <laughs> I warned you. It's, it's a short one. A short one. A short one. So, we're gonna go ahead and just continue farming up. Uh, mostly I want my Yasha before I really start doing anything. You see, my team is in the mid lane. It's like, okay, you know what, I'm coming. I just want the Yasha. The Yasha is really, really useful. It, it's such a nice item to have. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and actually start pushing down the mid. Honestly, that was a little bit surprising that my team just continued sitting in the mid lane and was like, just like, hey, let's go, let's push. I'm like, okay, sure, I mean, we can do that. I just didn't really expect it. Uh, but we go ahead and get the tower. Got my Yasha in just a second again. It's it's an important item. It's so good. I love man. I I, I like buying Manta Star just because I like that lets me have a Yasha, right? Like that's all the only reason why I like Manta Star. It's just like oh, I can have a Yasha this way. But yeah, we're breaking down all of the towers, and this is again, we're just using an early advantage, and this is a really really important thing. Lots of lower skill level teams don't do this. If you're in a position, I don't. Why did I not pick up that bounty rune? Must have been distracted by they're reading chat or something. <laughs> but lo lots of like lower skill level players, they will not push an advantage, right? Like this is this is the most essential -less lesson in all of Dota, in all of Dota. If you have an advantage, right? If you're in a position 
where your opponents can't really fight you anymore. Just kill them. Right? Don't keep farming. Don't keep getting bigger. Just kill them. What are you doing? What, are, what? Actually, what am I doing right now? Huh. Oh, shit. My team is fighting at the bottom. I actually don't remember what what, what happened here. <laughs> Just took a quick, a quick little break. You know, nothing too big. Nothing too big. Uh, we get the Enigma kill here. Tower goes down. But yeah, it's just like, you have a lead, you have an advantage. Go kill your opponent. What are you doing? Right? You have an early network fleet? Get some towers. Oh, you've got more of a network fleet now. Go get Roshan. Or oh, you even got, got even more fun? Get more towers. Oh shit, your network fleet is 20,000. Kill them. Just fucking kill them. You know, like, you gotta kill them. So we go ahead and start pushing this down. It's not really much of a defense here. But this is, again, like, this was really, like, this game, to me, was mostly about the early game, right? I wanted to bring some points across there. I hope that Juggernaut little tip was, was interesting. I know this is not, like, the craziest game or anything like that. But this was just a game where we had a plan, we had a strategy, we had a draft that works, and we just, like, killed them. Right? And at this point, what can they do? They lose two barracks, the meatball ash, nothing. Right? Like, this is just over. This is just over. And yes, it is, like... Just a little while longer, and then we go and start finishing up the game. But yeah, I don't know. I find that an important little thing to keep in mind. Sometimes you just gotta kill your opponent. It's that simple. So yeah, anyway. At this point, we'll just farm up the... Um, Mantis style. Uh, it's not gonna get to the Diffusal Blade. Right, I feel like it's not really spoilers that this game is over in just a little bit. So at this point, we can drop the whole talking about the game thing. Uh, was this interesting? Just like go purely into mentality, thinking like what's planning, what, what are we doing? That kind of thing. I don't know. I think I'm pretty good at explaining thought processes like that. And I think I have a pretty like, you know, good grasp on why something is good in Dota and all of that. So, I don't know. You guys tell me. Anyway. I see a lot of heroes down here. I get myself the Mantis Star before I really walk in. It's kind of a little bit spooky, but I'm going to walk in anyway because I really don't give a damn. But then, there's nobody here anymore. I find one. But it's an Omni Knight. An Omni Knight is just not that easy to kill. So I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'll just go do something else. And like, get the rest of your buildings. It's really that simple, you know? You're not going to fight me? I'm gonna fight your towers. <laughs> so yeah, that's gonna be like the last push here. Go ahead and get rid of this really quick. And that's gonna be it. Oh well, there's an Ursa. Just gonna go ahead and Omni Slash him. So it's really one of those things where it's just like... Yeah, he gave up. <laughs> he teleported in right on top of the... Disruptor ultimate, and it's just like, what does the Meepo do in that spawn? He just doesn't do anything. He just does nothing. Right, like, that's just it. This, uh, this is just game over for him. Poor little guy doesn't stand a chance. And this is something I don't understand. Like, at this point, the Ursa just abandons. Why would you abandon at this point? Like, why would you want to, like, <laughs> like, why would you go for it? Like, why would you abandon at this point? I don't get it. Anyway, I run in here, and then I'm like, oh shit! I had the Bloodseeker thing on me, and I just really can't tank the fountain right now. <laughs> so I end up dropping. Um, but yeah. I mean, obviously there's nothing they can do. The Mega Creeps are now coming in, and they're just gonna end it. So, anyway. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, would appreciate it if you left the rating on the video. I know it was a really short game, but I just wanted to yeah, do something. Do something a little bit different right here. And also, um, catch up on schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta catch up on schedule. Although, I am pretty much caught up at this point. Yeah, you know, like, I usually only take one day off a week. This this week I took two days off. Yeah. Two days off recording because of my birthday. So I was a little bit behind. 
It happens, you know. It's fine. Let me have my birthday. All right. Think I have that shit once a year. Let me enjoy that. <laughs> no work on my birthday. And actually, that's something I told myself. I'm just like, no work on my birthday. And I actually stuck to it. I was very surprised by that. So it's something I would usually stick to. Anyway. Shrine goes down. No, Ancient goes down. I don't know why I always call it the Shrine, but the Ancient goes down. That's gonna be it. Anyway. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a rating on the video. We'll definitely appreciate that. And I hope to see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye.